So in this video we're going to be uh, looking at the total solution of difference equations and we have just a few assumptions. First, that you understand the basics of difference equations and second, that you already know how to solve for the zero input response. So the way that I want to teach you about uh, the total solution of difference equations is through example. And so we're just going to do two uh, examples and as a part of this we're also going to find the um, impulse response h of n. And first we'll start by finding the total solution and impulse response for a system that's described by y of n equals 5 6 y of n minus 1 minus 1 6th y of n minus 2 plus x of n uh, with initial conditions that y of minus 1 equals 1, y of minus 2 equals 0, and x of n is 2 to the n u of n. Now, and what we know is y zero input. So the way that we do this is that we assume that uh, x of n equals to zero. And we also assume that y zero input of n uh, looks like c lambda to the n. This is the form of the characteristic mode. And then we plug this value in where we see y of n at, with x of n equal to zero. I'm going to get c lambda to the n minus five sixth c lambda to the n minus one plus one sixth c lambda to the n minus two equals to zero again because x of n is zero and what i can do is pull out from this c from everywhere and lambda to the n minus two and i'm left with lambda squared minus five sixth lambda plus one sixth equal to zero then what I'm going to do is uh, notice that since this is pulled out, it can be eliminated because I have zero on the other side. And so then I can factor this, by the way, uh, this piece here, is, I'll remind you, is what we call the characteristic equation. All right, we're gonna take this characteristic equation and factor it. It turns out that this is in fact factorable. I get lambda minus one third and lambda minus one-half equal to zero. So that means my characteristic modes are lambda one equals one-third and lambda two equals one-half. Fantastic. So based on this information, what I know is that y zero input of n is going to equal to this characteristic mode to the n and this one over here one half to the n and I've got some constant associated with each and then what I'd like to do is solve for those constants using the initial conditions that were given. Now I'll remind you, the initial conditions were given up here that y of minus 1 equals 1 and y of minus 2 equals 0. I can do this and it's relatively straightforward. All I have to do is I have to compare y at 0 to y0 input at 0. These things have to match each other. So y of 0 is the same as looking at uh, y of n when I put 0 in for n and x of n is 0. So y of 0 is equal to 5 sixths y of minus 1 minus 1 sixth y of minus 2. And I know from what I just showed you up there that y of minus 1 is equal to 1 and y of minus 2 is equal to 0. And so y of 0 must be equal to 5 sixth. Now let's compare that to, uh, and I'm going to make an annotation here, uh, that we're looking here for the n equal to 0 case. So y of 0 for the 0 input response I found is the same as saying c1 times one third 
to the 0 plus c2 times 1 half to the 0. And this is equal to the 5 sixths I just found above. So this tells me that c1 plus c2 equals to 5 sixths. Now, this means that I have one equation, but I have two unknowns still, so I need one more set of initial conditions. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do the same thing, except here for n equal to 1. When n equals to 1, I have y of 1, which is equal to 5 sixths y of 0. minus 1 sixth y of minus 1 and together these have to equal to something. This is equal to 5 sixths times 5 sixths minus 1 sixth times y of minus 1 which is 1. Together these equal to 19 thirty-sixths. Now, let's again look at y0 input at that time, n equal to 1. And here I have c1 times 1 third to the 1 plus c2 times 1 half to the 1. And this must equal to the 1936 that I found above. So this says that 1 third c1 plus 1 half c2 is equal to 19 36. Now you can call this equation 2 because now I have two equations in terms of c1 and c2 and I'm looking for c1 and c2. I can solve these equations simultaneously however I like. Uh, I would most likely probably use MATLAB but what you'll find is that c2 equals to 3 halves and c1 equals to negative 2 thirds and so y0 input of n is equal to negative 2 thirds times 1 third to the n plus 3 halves times 1 half to the n. So I've now found y0 input. Let's box it in uh, so that way uh, we know that this is an important result. And now let's go to the parts we don't know. So what I'd like to do is find y0 state of n if x of n is equal to 2 to the n u of n. Since our system is linear time invariant, we know that y0 state takes the form of the input. The system is linear time invariant. So since that's true, we're going to uh, say that y0 state of n is equal to some constant k times 2 to the n u of n. And what I'll do is I'll replace y with y0 state everywhere I see it in the original difference equation. So uh, we'll replace y dot, all right, dot just being a placeholder, with y0 state. everywhere. Okay, so when I do that, I'm going to get k 2 to the n u of n minus 5 sixth k 2 to the n minus 1 u of n minus 1 plus 1 sixth k 
2 to the n minus 2, u of n minus 2, and all of this is equal to the input x of n, which is 2 to the n u of n. Now, we need to make a very important assumption here. And this very important assumption is that n is greater than or equal to 2. Why do we do this? We do this because if n is greater than or equal to 2, u of n here equals to 1, u of n minus 1 equals to 1, u of n minus 2 equals to 1, and u of n again here equals to 1. If that condition is satisfied, then we can just get rid of those u of n's and it makes our lives a little bit easier. If this is our uh, true situation, then what I'm going to have is k. All right, you notice everything on the left-hand side has a k. So we're going to actually end up solving for that. Then we have 2 to the n minus 5 sixth, 2 to the n minus 1 plus 1 sixth, 2 to the n minus 2 equals to 2 to the n u of n. Now, next thing I want to highlight is that there's a 2 to the n minus 2 in every single one of these terms, left-hand side and right-hand side. So what I can do is say k times 2 to the n minus 2 multiplied by 2 squared minus 5 sixths times 2 plus 1 sixth equals 2 to the n minus 2 multiplied by 2 squared u of n. And since I've got a 2 to the n minus 2 on both sides, what I can do is cancel them out. So I've got now k times 2 squared, which is 4, minus 10 sixths, plus 1 sixth, is equal to 4. So 4 minus 10 sixths plus 1 sixth is 5 halves. And 5 halves is multiplied by k, so this means that k is equal to 8 fifths. And so y0 state is equal to 8 fifths 2 to the n. And because I made the assumption n is greater than or equal to 2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say then that I'm multiplying this by u of n minus 2. And what we do by delaying this is that it allows our zero state input to not interfere with our zero input solution. You see the zero state solution assumes there are zero initial conditions. The zero input solution assumes that the input is zero. And you notice the initial conditions I gave you occur before the value n equal to 2. And so the initial conditions are still true, even with this zero state solution. So I know that the total solution, y of n, is equal to y zero input of n plus y zero state of n. And so that means that my total solution y of n is equal to negative two-thirds times one-third to the n plus three-halves times one-half to the n plus eight-fifths times 2 to the n 
u of n minus 2. And this u of n minus 2 is only multiplied by the zero state part. Let's box this in. This is the final answer of this part. What I happen to be missing, though, is the impulse response. So how do I find the impulse response? That's a very valid question. So the next thing we'll do is h of n. To find h of n, h of n is found using y0 input of n, but not the constants we found. So we're going to y use y0 input, but not the constants we found. We'll actually have a set of initial conditions that are specific to the impulse response. All right, so we'll start with y0 input of n. It's equal to c1 times 1 third to the n plus c2 times 1 half to the n. And what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to say y of n is equal to 5 sixth times y of n minus 1 plus 1 sixth y of n minus 2 plus delta of n. And delta is the input that we have. Now, we're going to use very specific initial conditions. So uh, we're going to also use this equation here uh, that I've just defined. We're going to use this uh, with specific initial conditions. And the initial conditions here are is are that, r is that, uh, y of 0 is equal to 1, y of minus 1, and anywhere else is equal to 0. All right, anywhere else is equal to 0. So here, here we go. Uh, and also, since I'm looking for the output, it has a special name. It has the name, the impulse response. So we'll call it H. Okay, so uh, first step, let's say n equal to 0. At n equal to 0, I've got uh, h of 0 is equal to, well, I've already established it's 1, but to prove that to you, it's 5 sixth times y of minus 1 minus 1 six times y of minus two plus delta of zero, which is one. Uh, and what I should know is that y of minus one and y of minus two are zero. And so h of zero is one. And I'm going to set that for y zero input of zero. All right, I already know this is c1 times one third to the zero, which is just C1, plus C2 times one half to the zero, which is just C2. And that has to equal to one. And this will be my equation A, since I already have used one and two in this example. I'm gonna call that equation A. Next, let's go to N equal to one. At N equal to one, I have uh, H of one. So this is gonna be five sixths y of 0 minus 1 sixth y of minus 1 plus delta of 1. Well, it should be clear to you that uh, y of 0 is 1. That's what we already found. That's the same as h of 0. And that y of minus 1 is 0. And delta of 1 is 0, so I'm just going to get 5 6 times 1, which is 5 6. All right, and I know y0 input of 1 is equal to 1 third c1. That's c1 times 1 third to the 1 plus 1 half c2. That's c2 times 1 half to the 1. 
and this is equal to 5 sixth. This will be equation B. Again, I can solve these two simultaneous equations in whichever way that I choose. Um, if I solve these two equations, I'll find that C2 is equal to 3 and C1 equal to negative 2. And so H of N is equal to negative 2 times 1 third to the N plus 3 1 half to the N. And now we have completed the solution of this problem. Now we've done one example, that's great. It's always nice to do a second example just to make sure that we know what's going on. So let's go ahead and do a second example. In this example, I want to find the output y of n. I want to find the impulse response h of n. And my difference equation is y of n equals 3y of n minus 1 plus 4y n, y of n minus 2 plus xn plus 2xn minus 1. Woo. So to solve this, we're again going to first start with y0 input. And so we're going to set x of n and x of n minus 1 equal to 0. There's no input. We're also going to assume that y0 input of n it looks like c lambda to the n. And uh, we can kind of skip, skip through some steps here. We're going to get out here c lambda to the n minus 2 times lambda squared minus 3 lambda minus 4 equals to 0, where the part over here can be canceled. And what remains is my characteristic equation. And this does, in fact, factor. It does, in fact, factor. It factors, in fact. To lambda plus 1, lambda minus 4. Now, we will see in the future that uh, those values for lambda cause the system to be unstable anyway, so it doesn't matter, matter whether the input or, uh, is bounded or not. That's a little fun fact, but that's coming in the future. And I can't forget my equals zero. Now, this means that y0 input of n is going to look like c1 times minus 1 to the n, because lambda 1 equals minus 1 and lambda 2 equals to 4, plus c2 times 4 to the n. Now, in a previous example from a previous lecture that there's not a video for, we know that for this exact example, I know that y0 input of n is equal to minus 1 to the n plus 1 plus 4 to the n plus 2. I'm not going to go through these solution steps. You can do that as an exercise at home. Uh, if you aren't in the previous lecture, uh, you can definitely figure this out on your own. So this is y0 input of n. In other words, we know C1 is uh, minus 1, and that C2 is going to be 16. Next, let's go to Y0 state. For Y0 state, we assume that Y0 state has the form of the input, which is k times 4 to the n u of n. And then using the same procedure we did in example 1, we could go. However, we have a problem. Let's see if we can identify what that problem is. All right, I'll pause and wait uh, until you give me a response. Seriously, pause the video and go and look. Anyone? Of course you can't respond because this is YouTube and it's a video. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to point out the fact that my system has a characteristic mode, which is 4. And so I can't have 4 to the n as an input 
and expect to get a response like that. So instead, what I need to do is say, oh no, four is part of, and we'll even say four to the n, is part of the solution. This is not good, so we're going to take a strategy that we have had before. That strategy is to treat this like a repeated root, and so we're going to say, all right, y zero state of n is equal to k times n times 4 to the n u of n. And then we can proceed to solve. So let's go ahead and substitute this into my difference equation. All right, so I'll get k in 4 to the n u of n minus 3 k times n minus 1 4 to the n minus 1 u of n minus 1 will also have minus 4 k times n minus 2 4 to the n minus 2 u of n minus 2 all right this is one side of an equation on the right hand side i'm going to have 4 to the n i'm going to have 4 to the n u of n plus 2 times 4 to the n minus 1 u of n minus 1. Now we're going to again make an important assumption. We're going to assume n is greater than or equal to 2. Same assumption we made in example 1. The reason for that is to get rid of my u of n's because they're equal to 1 at all points where n is greater than or equal to 2. All right, if we assume n is greater than or equal to 2, then that allows us to get rid of the u of n's. We cannot, however, forget about these n's over here. So we're going to pull out k 4 to the n minus 2 from the left-hand side. And I'm going to be getting uh, over here n times 4 squared minus n minus 1 times 3 times 4 minus n minus 2 times 4 times 1. And on the right hand side I can pull out also the 4 to the n minus 2 and I get 4 squared plus 2 times 4. After I cancel this 4 to the n minus 2 I should see that I have k outside my parentheses and then I've got uh, 16n minus 12n plus 12 minus 4n plus 8 and this is equal to 4 squared which is 16 plus 8. So if I collect these n's together I should get 16 minus 12 minus 4, which is 16 minus 16 multiplied by n. And so thankfully, those n's cancel out. And so I'm going to get 20k is equal to 24. And that implies k must be equal to 24 over 20, which is also known as 6 fifths. As a result, y zero state of n is equal to six fifths times four to the n. I almost forgot my n here. And multiplied by u of n minus two. Make sure that looks like it, a u. So I've got now y zero state, and then the total solution is just the addition of y0 state and y0 input so y of n is just equal to negative 1 
to the n plus 1. plus 4 to the n plus 2, plus 6 fifths n times 4 to the n u of n minus 2. And so I have my total solution. Viola, or if I invert the diphthong, voila. The thing that we are missing still is h of n, so I need to do uh, 3 h of n, the impulse response. Again, what I'm going to do is use the zero input solution, but not the constants. All right, the zero input solution tells me that uh, y zero input of n is equal to c1 times minus 1 to the n plus c2 times 4 to the n. And what I should remember is that we're going to say y of 0 equals to 1 and y of otherwise equals to 0. Those are our initial conditions for finding the impulse response. Let's start with n equal to 0. At n equal to 0, I'm going to get... Uh, y of uh, 0, which is equal to, again, uh, looking at the difference equation, it should look like this. It should be 3 times y of minus 1 plus 4 times y of minus 2 plus delta of 0 plus 2 delta of minus 1. And I know that y of minus 1 is equal to 0, and y of minus 2 is equal to 0, and delta of minus 1 is equal to 0, and so y of 0 should be equal to 1. And if I compare that to y0 input at 0, I get c1 plus c2 equals to 1. Let's call that equation star. All right, next let's do n equal to 1. At n equal to 1, I've got y of 1, which is equal to 3y of 0 plus 4y of minus 1 plus delta of 1 plus 2 delta of 0. Well, conveniently, I know that delta of 1 is 0, and I know that y of minus 1 is 0. I know that y of 0 is equal to 1, and I know delta of 0 equals to 1. And so I'm going to get 3 plus 2, which is equal to 5. All right, comparing this to y0 input of 1, I should get that I have minus 1 c1, that's c1 times minus 1 to the 1, plus 4 c2, which is c2 times 4 to the 1, is equal to 5. And I'm going to call this equation star star. I can solve those equations simultaneously. Solve star and star star. Those are the worst stars I've ever seen. For C1 and C2. And when I do so, I'm going to find that C2 is 6 fifths and C1 is minus 1 fifth. And so I'm going to find that H of N is equal to minus 1 fifth times minus 1 to the N plus 6 fifths times 4 to the n. And there is my final solution for the impulse response. That's all I have to do today. So this is the material that you should understand to find the total solution to difference equations.
poopy. Erase that poopy poop. Erase that poopy poop.